Chihaya is saying, I got a query. As atheists, how do you deal with issues such as depression, anxiety, despair, stress, etc.? The thought of having somebody to fall back on helps religious people. Uh, we, by, by the way, we ha we do have an episode that's related to this that's coming in June, right? And this is uh, so. So this is something that we will be dealing with in uh, um, in time. But I will say uh, one thing: how do you, how do you deal with uh, such issues? A lot of it has to do with community. I've noticed that a lot of people who, who become atheists, especially in the Muslim world, they do tend to lose their families. They do tend to feel isolated. They tend to feel like they're alone, alienated, uh, that they, they're, they're the only ones. Um, and they're facing, they, they can't be themselves. They can't be themselves. They can't talk and speak and think freely. Um, so even with their own families and their own loved ones. So, um, you know, a lot of times when you come out and the, the online world has really helped this way. Social media has helped, the internet's helped where you know you can come out you can find people of community you can actually sometimes meet up with them um and and you can share your concerns and your stories and you'll find out that you're not alone a lot of people go through the same thing all right um, so here's the thing me and ali were not mental health experts if i'm going to tell you what i do uh, and however you do not take our advice at all by any means as expert opinions and you should not be uh, trusting us for uh, advice like this. If I tell you what my, what's working for me, you might you might want to decide if you want to try it, but that, that what works for me might not work for any of you, okay? So, here's what what I started doing um before and it worked a lot, but now I even made it a lot more advanced, okay? So the way that um I thought about it is that Ali, can you mute yourself? I, you you're breathing mm -hmm. into the microphone. Um the is Every time something like this happens, you focus. What I do is I focus on the source of um, the annoyance or the source of whatever is making me upset. Okay, so by the way, this only works for people that don't have depression as like a medical condition because this only works for people that get get upset for things that are happening in the external world, not because of chemical issues that they're having in the brain, right? That that requires a lot more expert attention. You might need to see somebody, you might need to see professionals. I'm talking about people that, that don't have that problem, like people like me, when we get, with people like me, when we get upset, it's because something happened and we're reacting to it, right? And actually that's an, like, if something bad happens to you and you get upset over it, that's completely, you know, that is not a mental disorder, that's you reacting to something bad that has happened into your life, right? The problem is that every a lot of times when you when you feel anxiety, despair, or stress, um, it, gets, it gets mixed with confusion because you're feeling, you're feeling not well, but you cannot isolate the source of what is responsible. Like, it's easy to, it's easier, not easy, to deal with it when you know what happened. Let's say like something bad happens and now you're upset, is a you know okay well I'm upset because this happened you know exactly why right but then sometimes you feel bad and you don't know why and I have took that as a um, as an opportunity to try to see if I could isolate what event has caused this and it has become such a very I've become so good at it right so I I re I try to really become mindful of my mind and. Um, of what's happening in my mind and see if I could c isolate exactly what is responsible for what, why I'm feeling bad right now and then focus on it. And then when I see the causal relationship in what started it, I fo by focusing on it, um, I become, I, I see that it's justified and I become less annoyed. I'm like, well, of course I'm uh, upset about this because now I see what started it and being being able to look at it in my mind makes it a lot easier to deal with it. And in fact, now I've gotten to a point where not only I can isolate it and see what the source of it is, um, I see it as an opportunity, right? So I even try to enjoy it in a way that I enjoy exercising, right? So for example, when I'm lifting weights, the pain that you're feeling in your muscle when you're lifting weight, you know that this pain means that it's working that means that you're growing that you are that you're meeting a resistant and pushing through that resistant resistance is making you stronger right so when i go through my life and i i see something upsetting me i tell myself 
fantastic. This is an opportunity. This is a because I don't get that. You know, I'm like, is is if I go through life without stress and without struggle, I don't have that much opportunity to grow, right? If life is too easy, how can I train my mind to become stronger? So every time something makes me upset, I'm like, I love it. I need this because I need this to as a give me something to stress over so I can learn how to handle it. So I look at it as an exercise. And hey guys, if you want to join these streams live, get your comments and questions read by Ali and Armin and the guests, and most importantly, to get full access to the full video versions of all these episodes, become a patron. Link in the description below.